I welcome all the participants for the day 10 for the course cyber security. So today we are going to see the third unit in your uh, syllabus of uh, cyber security that is network layer. So what are the concepts uh, in network layer that we have already discussed in the first unit. So we will uh, quickly walk on through this uh, these topics which are specified in the third unit in your uh, course curriculum okay so today we are going to see uh, networking devices isp that is internet service provider and vpn that is virtual private network okay the objective of the session is to know make you know about the networking devices internet service provider and the virtual private network and the outcome of the session is to the student may be able to understand the fundamentals of the networking devices, internet service provider and the concepts of virtual private network. So these are the outlines planned for today's session. First we will be quickly go through the networking devices. So that networking devices which we have already seen in the fundamentals of the computer networks in first unit itself. So I will be moving off in a quick over uh, walkthrough. And the next comes the internet service provider. And we will be discussing what is the introduction and uh, what are the examples of internet service providers and how, uh, what are the factors which uh, needs to consider while choosing the ISP and what are the types involved in ISP and services provided by the internet service provider and what are the types of link to ISP and what are the equipments needed or used for ISP. So this is what about the ISP and the next comes the types of networks so this uh, topic also we have seen already. So in add on to this uh, such types of networks like uh, LAN, MAN, WAN, we are going to add on with the virtual private network also that is VPN. So we are going to see what is meant by VPN and what is the need for uh, VPN and uh, we will be having a brief overview of VPN and how it works, what is the architecture of the VPN and what are the requirements to set up a virtual private network okay so the requirements are tunneling encryption encapsulation authentication firewall then we'll be seeing what are the types of vpn there are three types are available one is remote access vpn intranet vpn and extranet vpn and what are the protocols used uh, while setting up a virtual private network, so there are three protocols so there. One is point to point tunneling protocol, the other one is layer to tunneling protocol, then internet protocol security. So these are the three protocols used while setting up a virtual private network. And we will be seeing what are the advantages of VPN and disadvantages of VPN. So this was the topics plan was planned today's uh, in today's session okay next uh, coming uh, to the today's session we'll be seeing what is meant by a networking device it's a component used to connect the computers and other devices together so for what purpose we are going to connect is that we are going to share some files resources like uh, printers uh, fax machines etc so that there comes the need for networking devices for connection or in order to make the communication in a good manner we are in need of networking devices in other words we can say networking components so the components includes nodes it is node in the sense it's a device okay the device may be a personal computer or server or switch, bridge, router, gateway, hub, repeaters, etc. 
so all these are called as some devices connecting devices or we represent as a host machine or workstation or nodes okay then the term comes links so what is meant by links uh, is nothing but the connection is made between the nodes with the help of some devices or medias transmission media such as optical fibers coaxial cable and or in the form of so coaxial cable and optical fibers or uh, will be used in a wired connection and wireless okay next comes the the next component is client so client is a computer that is requesting some information from the server usually it is it will be a desktop computers or host machine okay so thin client what do you mean by thin client is in the sense it is a computer with no local storage that is called as thin client okay so servers they are the computers that work behind the scene to provide some resources to the client whatever requested sent by the client okay there are two types of uh, servers over there one is uh, dedicated server and the other one is non dedicated so non dedicated means it provides many different services to the client computers so for example it can go for sharing the um, any files or printing or email etc so dedicated means it provides only one type of resource to the particular client such as print printing okay so the other network components involved or shared peripherals so shared peripherals means it's a device that is connected to a computer and which will be controlled by the microprocessor the cpu of the uh, computer okay for example printer fax machine etc so media means it's nothing but the transmission channel we can say okay the physical pieces used to transport the data from one computer to another computer okay so data means we are sending the packets from one place to another place okay so network devices means it can uh, go for controlling the amount of traffic on a network or it can go for uh, with the help of the devices it can go for speeding up the flow of data over the network that's the main uh, uh, benefit of using the network devices okay so these are some of the different uh, networking devices available hub switch gateway bridge router repeater okay so we can go for connect classifying the connecting devices as networking devices and internet working devices so networking devices comprises repeaters bridges and internet working devices comprises routers and gateways so then next uh, we'll see one by one uh, about uh, connecting devices the first one is network interface card so it provides a interface between the computer and the cabling so it will be useful for preparing the data send the data and control the flow of data and it will also use to receive and translate the data for the machine to understand okay and it it has a specific mac address that is uh, that will be of 48 uh, bits and usually we will be using a uh, ethernet uh, nic that is network interface card which is a physical and data link layer technology used for connecting uh, the lan and their next uh, connecting device is repeater so this uh, repeater is used to regenerate the electrical signals okay so with the physical media like ethernet or wifi the data transmissions can only span a limited distance before the quality of the signal degrades so whenever the signal becomes weak the repeaters can go for amplifying the signal and pass it on to the next uh, devices okay so 
so it uh, also removes the unwanted noise in the incoming signals so but it won't filter any signal traffic it does the job of regenerating the weak signals okay so this uh, repeater is works in the physical layer of the osm model so here you can see how the repeater is connected uh, um, with the other uh, machines okay next connecting uh, device is modem so modem there are two types of modem dsl and adsl so dsl means digital subscriber line and uh, adsl means asymmetric digital subscriber line so modem in the sense it comes from the word modulator and demodulator modulator means converting the signal digital signal into analog signal demodulation means converting the analog signal back into the digital signal that is demodulation okay so what is dsl so dsl is a technology used to transmit the digital data over the telephone line that is called a digital subscriber line okay and asymmetric digital subscriber line means it is one of the type of dsl so under dsl you can have uh, three types one is adsl asymmetric digital subscriber line symmetric dsl that is sdsl we can call and the third type is VDSL that is very high speed uh, digital subscriber line. Okay, so what about this uh, ADSL is is that uh, it is a type of uh, DSL broadband communication technology. It is used for uh, connecting to the internet. Okay, so ADSL is a system which provides a fast uh, internet connection. Okay. So what is ISP? So here you can see uh, ISP is a internet service provider, which is uh, mainly required to give the connection, complete connection to the internet. So ISP will be connecting the or provide the internet connection. So next connecting device is hub, which is. Uh, commonly used to connect many segments in a lan okay so it contains uh, so many number of ports in it so we call this as a multi multiple port okay and if whenever a packet arrives to at one port it will copies the same copy and transfer it to the other port so that all the segments of the lan can see all the packets okay so here you can have hub uh, as two types one is active hub other one is passive hub so what is the function of the active hub is that it uh, simply amplify the signal okay and uh, before broadcasting it will amplify and clean up the signal to the other ports it will send the uh, amplified signal to the other ports and what is the function of the passive uh, hub is that it simply connect all ports electrically okay and uh, they repeat any signal that comes in one port and copy it to the other port so this process is called as broadcasting so hub will do the job of broadcasting so broadcasting in the sense so whatever the packets received by the hub it will forward or copy it to the other port so that uh, process is called as uh, broadcasting so this uh, connecting device hub is works in the physical layer of the osi model okay. so here you can see the picture of uh, how the hub is uh, connected to every other uh, systems okay so you can have 16 port uh, hub 8 port hub then uh, five port hub okay the next uh, connecting device is bridge so this bridge is used to 
connect the two different networks for example it can go for combining two different lands okay so this is used to filter the traffic based on the map address okay so unlike uh, repeaters bridge is also used to filter the noise it works in the data link layer of the os model okay so the main disadvantage of uh, bridges is that they cannot connect uh, this uh, dissimilar network types or perform the intelligent path selection so for that purpose they can go for uh, connecting the router okay. so here you can see the bridge is connecting uh, two different uh, lands so the ports are limited uh, to 16 only okay so here you can see the connection uh, in the first picture uh, system a is uh, transferring the packet to system d so there is no need for uh, using any connecting devices so because the transfer is uh, within the lan okay suppose if you are going to transfer from one lan to another lan from a to g then the connecting device bridge comes into picture okay so next uh, connecting device is switch so switch is a uh, connecting device which is used to connect so many other uh, devices which is capable of inspecting some data frames uh, whatever uh, received and determines the source address destination address of the frame and forward it to the next devices so that's the main function of the switch okay it's uh, also a yeah, da data link layer device or layer 2 device okay it will be acting in the data link layer okay so what is the difference between hub and the switch is that uh, all the nodes connected to the hub will be sharing the bandwidth among the others so how many systems are connected to the hub so each and every node will be sharing the bandwidth in case of using the hub whereas if you are using the connecting device switch it is not the case so each device will be utilizing the full bandwidth that's the difference between hub and the switch so here you can see uh, how the hub and the switch is connected in the network so if 10 nodes are communicating using a hub on a 10 megabits per second network then each node will be getting only a portion of the 10 megabits per second that is if you are using a hub that 10 megabits per second bandwidth will be shared how uh, will be shared among the nodes that are connected to the hub for a switch but with a switch each node will be communicating with the full 10 megabits per second the next connecting device is router so we call this router as a intelligent device so it is mainly used for the purpose of routing it will take the routing decisions then it will forward the packets to the corresponding destination okay so normally it is used to connect one lan to the another and it is also used to connect multiple network types and determines the best path for the sending the data so router is mainly used for choosing the best path for forwarding the packets okay but it is uh, very slower than the bridges because there are more intelligent devices okay router is used in the uh, layer 3 that is network layer of the os model so when you are going for setting up a van that is wide area network you have to use two routers at least okay so here you can see how the router is uh, used to connect in a network okay so here three routers are uh, connected via via the uh, between the many post okay next uh, connecting device is gateway 
uh, is an inter networking system which is uh, which will be used to connect or join the two networks the two networks can use different types of protocols so the basic difference between the bridge and the gateway is the bridge will be used to combine two different networks of using the same protocol at the either uh, side but gateway can be used to join the two networks of using different protocols okay that's the main difference between bridge and the gateway This gateway can operate at any le le level of the OSM model. Okay, here you can see. So the workstations, web server, and uh, it's connected via the uh, gateway. So this gateway is acting as an interface between the internet and the other uh, networks. Okay, so it is connecting internet as well as the LAN setup. Okay. So. Previous we have seen uh, so what are the uh, networking devices. So next comes the internet service provider. Okay, so which was first emerged in the year uh, late 1980 and early 1990 uh, we call this as a company internet service provider or the company or it may be an organization that provides the internet facility to the customers okay so isp uh, we can call in another term as iap that is internet access provider which is a business company or uh, organization that provides some computer uh, consumers or business access to the internet and the related service internet service and the related service will be provided by the isp okay so these are some of the examples of isp might have come across all these uh, such types of uh, service providers geo idea Airtel, bsnl vodafone etc and some other things or uh, mtn utl infocom smile rock telecom etc okay. so how the this isp technology is employed so it can be employed for the home users for the business or any organization etc so what are the things uh, employed for the home users are dial-up connection, DSL, that is ADSL and broadband wireless access, cable modem and ISDN. And coming on to the any organization, the technology is provided, uh, ISP will be providing uh, DSL, that is SDSL or ADSL. SDSL means symmetric digital subscriber line. ADSL means asymmetric digital subscriber line. Okay. And Ethernet technology is ISDN and satellite internet. So there are some factors to consider while choosing the internet service provider. So we need to consider the bandwidth that is how far we are going to uh, download or uh, retrieve some files that is down on the bandwidth speed of the internet okay then cost so, so for setting up the connection and service fee also it includes all these uh, costs then then availability so availability in this sense reachability of the net okay then reliability there is downtime and convenience okay. these are the factors need to be considered when choosing the internet service provider and uh, bandwidth means it's nothing but the data transferring speed which is provided by the isp so internet service provider company availability means availability of the networks what is the uh, network which is uh, providing some uh, additional features to the customers okay availability of the network and performance to its users okay. cost refers to pricing of the connection as well as the services provided okay network security it is an important issue related to the network over the internet. So everyone has its own private uh, information that is need to be secured on the servers. Customer services, uh, ISP uh, should provide a better customer service. Okay, this 
which is highly required okay and the location and and they need for speed so location and speed is may uh, they are considered as the main important factors so when we looking an internet provider the best uh, thing is we will be searching for a location where we live or a better location refers to good level of customer support so there are some of the uh, types of isps over there one is uh, first one is access internet service provider the next thing is mailbox hosting isp and transit isp virtual isp that is called as v isp free isp also okay so what is i access isp is that it employs the variety of technologies to facilitate the customers uh, connection to the network so accessing the network should be a easy one okay so this technology may include broadband or dial up connections okay so this broadband connections will be uh, set up via using the cable or fiber optic service dsl and satellite mailbox isp means it offers some email uh, uh, mailbox hosting services will be there and the email service servers to send receive and store the email is also provided and many mailbox isp is also are also access providers also so hosting isp means uh, they offer email ftps web hosting services virtual machines cloud services uh, and physical services all these will be provided by the hosting isp then transit isp means it provides some large bandwidth uh, used to needed to connect the hosting isp and access isp together also so virtual isp means it will uh, purchase the service from the other isps in order to allow the customers uh, internet access it will uh, have a connection with the another isp that is virtual isp okay so free isp means it provide uh, free of charge okay and often it displays the uh, advertisements when users are connected so what are the services provided by internet service providers so they will be providing internet access uh, and uh, domain name registration domain name hosting dial up access and lease line access these are some of the services provided by the internet service provider and what is the type of link to isp required first one is we can go for wireless internet service provider the second thing um, mobile phones then we might have heard this hotspot then satellite okay. so wireless uh, link is that uh, radio frequency bands are used in place of uh, cable networks or telephone that is instead of wiring you are uh, going for the wireless Okay. so one of the greatest advantage of using wireless internet connection is that always will be connected so that will be accessed from any location despite of any location you will, uh, you will always be connected within the network coverage okay so mobile phones means many cell phones and smartphone providers offer the voice plans with the internet access and mobile internet connections provide good speeds also and allow the user to access the internet connections okay. hotspot means they are the site which offer the internet access over the wireless local area network by the with the help of the router so that router will be connecting to the internet service provider okay. so hotspot utilizes the wifi technology which allows the devices to be connected in in the internet and you can go for uh, exchanging the data uh, without any wires okay wirelessly can uh, exchange the data so satellite in the sense uh, in certain areas where broadband connections is not offered you can go for the satellite internet option so similar to the wireless access satellite connection we using a modem 
so there are some of the equipments which is which are needed or required to connect to the internet service provider or the equipments needed or mobile phone modem satellite receiver telephone line that is landline connection fiber optic cables okay. so how will how does the isp connect the users to the internet so suppose if you are going for uh, connected to the when the user is connecting to your internet through this service internet service provider the communication between the user and the isp is established with the help of the protocol called uh, point to point protocol that is ppp so this protocol will be used to connect the two remote protocols two remote computers to communicate without the ip address okay. so we need to go with the two terms one is uh, peering and the other term is transit so what do you mean by peering is then is that you can go for exchanging the data directly between the internet service providers without the internet that, uh, that is without uh, through the internet that is peering transit means is a service which allows the traffic from another network another network to, to cross through okay so these are uh, some of the types of networks which we have seen in the first unit itself um, lan that is local area network wan is wide area network wlan is wireless local area network pan is uh, personal area network san is storage area network sign some other case we can call san as a system area network and gan is global area network and man is metropolitan area network can is we can call uh, campus area network or otherwise called as controller area network dan is desk area network and vpn is virtual private network. these are some of the types of networks available so as you uh, all know this lan is a uh, specified or uh, which covers a small geographic area there is small office home or internet caps etc it uses a tcp ip network protocol for communication between the networks okay and wan means wide area network that is it covers the uh, it, that is you can um, set up a network within the city okay so it covers large distance for the communication between the network so the best example for a wide area network is internet okay and the wireless local area network is that uh, it's commonly referred to as wifi wireless fidelity okay so unlike uh, lan uh, in uh, wireless lan no wires are connected no wires are used so in this case radio signals are the uh, acting as a transmission medium for communication okay next comes the personal area network that is uh, pan so here you can uh, this can be connected this can be constructed with the cables or wireless so pan is a network that can be set with the help of a wire or wireless also so usb and uh, firewire technologies often link uh, together with the uh, together a uh, wire the pan okay and the wireless pan uh, pan means a best example bluetooth sometimes uh, infrared connections also possible so bluetooth pan or sometimes called as piconets other name is uh, we can call it as piconets okay so uh, pan covers the range of less than 10 meters or about 30 feet okay so what is meant by storage area network so this otherwise called a system area network so mainly this network is formed or uh, set up mainly for the data management it is designed mainly for the data management purpose so this is also known as cluster area network which uh, connects the high performance computers with the high speed uh, connection
conditions are possible. Okay. So what is uh, GAN is global area network. Uh, it refers to any network that is composed of different interconnected computers, computer networks. Okay, and it also covers unlimited uh, geographical area. Okay. So broadband uh, GAN is a global satellite internet uh, network that uses some portable uh, terminals for telephony. Okay. And MAN uh, is metropolitan area network. The thing is that it covers a wide, uh, large area. So it uh, the, the network is set up between the countries or uh, continents. Okay, it spans the entire city or campus or continents. Okay. Okay. What is uh, CAN? Is a campus area network, otherwise called as controller area network. So a serial bus network of microcontrollers that connects the devices, sensors, actuators in a system. For that purpose, we are using a campus area network. Okay. There is no addressing scheme uh, used in this controller area network. So campus area network is used to interconnect the networks in a limited geographical area that is uh, within the university campus or military bases or within the organization campus you can set up this uh, campus area network then comes desk area networks dan okay this uh, it is the interconnection of the computer devices around the atm that is uh, asynchronous transfer mode so this exchange of information between the peripheral device and the processor is based on the transfer of ATM cells mainly. Okay, so this DAM enables the network to share the resources over the network. Okay. Here you can see DAM is uh, uh, you can connect uh, within the uh, campus or any organization or small office MAN inside the city can connect, you can set up a MAN connection Van is uh, uh, it is wide across the continent or country. Then comes virtual private network. Okay, so this is a private network mainly used for uh, transmission of the private informations between the organization or any companies, etc. So for that purpose, it is mainly used. Okay, it's a private network that uses public network to connect the remote sites or the remote users together. So it uses the virtual connections routed through the internet from the business private network to the remote site. So employee will be located at the remote site. That employee will be connected to the any business organization via this uh, virtual private network. Okay. So what is VPN? It's a technology that creates a network that is uh, physically it will be a public but virtually you're going the conversation is going to be a uh, sharing of private information or secured information. Okay. So VPN require remote uses of the network to be authenticated and you can go for uh, transmitting the secure data with some encoding transmissions uh, encoding technologies used for uh, securing the data so in order to prevent some uh, revealing of the private information to the unauthorized party that's the main uh, concept of using this VPN okay. you need to restrict some unauthorized users so that you can uh, go for uh, transferring the private information upon connecting this uh, virtual private networks. Okay. So it uh, became more popular as the employees working in remote locations. You can uh, connect the remote uh, employees with the, uh, by setting up this uh, virtual private network. Okay. 
So it is uh, mainly used by companies, organizations who want to communicate confidentiality. So internet is acting as a backbone for setting up this uh, virtual private network. It is a secure way of connecting the private land at a remote location using the internet or any unsecured public network to transport the data packets privately using some uh, encryption algorithms. Okay. So mainly uh, this VPN uses authentication to deny some access to the unauthorized users. And it will also do the encryption process to prevent the unauthorized users from reading the secure informa information. So, so what uh, factors to consider the need for a virtual private uh, network or uh, you should uh, create a private network then lease lines then uh, private network that should be isolated from the world from the other networks or from the uh, common uh, networks it will be a costlier things and it creates its own uh, TCP IP internet also. So for all these purposes, we need to set up a virtual private network. So how it works, it is based on two connections that one is to, you have to make the internet connection. Then the second thing, you have to make the virtual private networks. And datagram is nothing but the data. Uh, it contains, the datagram contains the data which will be contain, uh, comprising the source address and the destination address. And uh, the next thing is firewall. So firewall means this uh, virtual private network allow the authorized users to pass through the firewall. So firewall will be acting as a filtering agent. So it won't allow the unauthorized users to pass through. Okay. So it uh, only give permission to allow the authorized users. Okay. Protocols used protocols will be creating the VPN tunnels. Okay, So VPN tunnel is the main uh, advantage in uh, virtual private network that uh, VPN tunnel will do the secured data transmission. Okay, So there are four uh, functions uh, which is provided by VPN is authentication that is validating the data that is sent from the sender and access control that is uh, uh, limiting the or avoiding the unauthorized users from accessing the network and confidentiality means preventing the data to be read that is data should not be leaked out okay while transmission there should not be any loss of data and data integrity means ensuring that the data is has not been altered in the transmission so uh, VPN we call it as a hybrid network so it uses uh, both the advantages of a private network private and the global internet okay. so privatization is done by the lease line with the help of a lease line lease line is a dedicated line okay it's also a cost inefficient and the traditional system you can see this picture so all the home offices that is regional offices or and the headquarters or connected with the help of the lease line okay and here you can see the architecture of a private virtual private network so these uh, regional offices are connected with the help of a VPN channel that is virtual private channel across the internet that's the main uh, thing to set up in a virtual private network okay so here you can see a person at the Hong Kong is to want to communicate with the person at the Paris. So that should be a, uh, the communication should be a secured one. So for that VPN uh, connection is made via the tunnel. Okay. So here is the packet, IP packet is uh, encrypted and it is transferred via this tunnel. So this header, IP header will be having the uh, source and the destination address. Okay. So what are the requirements to 
set a virtual private network is tunneling, encryption, encapsulation, authentication, and firewall. So, what is will be tunneling in the sense? It involves or it establishes the connection, network connection, and it maintains that particular connection. So, tunneling in the sense it's a process of uh, transmitting the packet, entire packet with the another packet. That is, uh, tunneling is that the packet will be sent, that packet will be encapsulated by another packet. So, for the purpose of secure transmission from one place to another place, and that will be transmitted via the internet. Okay. So, the outer packet will be protecting the inner packet. That inner packet will be containing the data or the information. Okay. So, the outer packet protects the contents from the public view and ensures that the packet moves within a virtual tunnel. Okay. So, here you can see uh, the employee's home. Uh, is sending a packet that is the uh, packet uh, from the client computer is sent via the internet. So, internet, uh, the VPN connection is uh, made, VPN connection in the sense VPN channel is used. So, across the VPN channel, the packet would be like this. There will be encapsulation of the outer packet will be encapsulating with the inner packet in order to provide a secure uh, transmission. Then it will pass on to the corresponding destination. So at the destination, the original message or the original packet will be received by the destination. At the destination. Okay. So on this connection, the packet in a VPN protocol format or encapsulated. Okay. And then it is transmitted between the VPN client and the VPN server. And at this receiving side, it will be de-encapsulated. So that the virtual packet will be received by the destination. So this allows the senders to encapsulate. The sender will be doing the encapsulation process. And the receiver will be at the receiving side. It will do the de-encapsulation process. Okay. In order to ensure the security uh, to protect the data from the unwanted viewers or the hackers. So there are two types of tunneling is possible. One is voluntary tunneling, the other one is compulsory tunneling. So voluntary tunneling in the sense, so VPN client will manage this. First it will make up the connection with the ISP via the transmission medium that is called the carrier. Then the VPN client application will create the tunnel that is VPN tunneling is made to the VPN server. So two connections to be made while using the voluntary, uh, voluntary tunneling. First thing VPN client has to make the connection with the ISP via the transmission medium or carrier. Second thing the VPN client application creates a VPN tunnel that should be connected with the VPN server. So next coming on to the next type that is compulsory tunneling. The thing is that there is no need for setting up a two connection. So when the client first makes an ordinary connection to the carrier or the carrier in turn made the connection between the client and the server. So a single connection is uh, enough to set up a tunneling, compulsory tunneling. So the compulsory tunneling will hide the details of the VPN server from the VPN client. Okay. And they will be going for effectively uh, transferring the messages. Okay. Next uh, requirement is uh, encryption. So encryption is nothing but the process of encoding the data that only a computer can understand then with the right decoder at the receiving side will decode and get the original data back okay so 
so vpn client will be at the vpn client will be doing the encryption process and the it will enter the uh, it will pass on to the tunnel so after entering the tunnel and uh, at the destination side it will decrypt decrypted and uh, the original information will be received by the uh, receivers okay there are two types of encryptions are possible the first two type is symmetric key encryption and public key encryption okay so symmetric uh, how the encryption takes place can be seen in this picture so first uh, in the first picture you can see uh, what is the series of action is carried out in the sender side and in the second uh, below picture you can see what is, what happens at the receiving side okay so at the center side the plain text will be encrypted along with some session key and this text is clear text is converted into cipher text so cipher text in the sense it is uh, encoded okay so here you'll be having the recipient public key also then the cipher text the cipher text along with the encrypted session key and it will also having the recipient public key also okay next at the receiving side the cipher text will be converted into the again the plain text while uh, using some uh, de decryption algorithms next uh, requirement is authentication so this process determine if the sender is an authorized person and so the data has been redirected to the other uh, workstation okay there are two levels of authentication so there one is computer level the other one is authentication user level Computer level authentication. The second thing is user level authentication. Okay, next comes the firewall configuration. So mainly the firewall will be protecting the unauthorized users, uh, in which it can restrict some hackers or uh, it can provide the information in a secure manner. It provides a network security and business continuity also. So it prevents the attacks and you secures your data communications uh, with the multiple VPN connections. There are two approaches to use this firewall with a VPN server. The first approach is a VPN server in front of the firewall, and the second approach is VPN server behind the firewall. Okay. So here you can see the picture. So here you, you are having the VPN client and the VPN server, which is connected by creating a VPN connection that is tunneling via the internet. And you are placing the firewall in front of the VPN server. Okay. So what is this? Uh, So with this, the VPN server, uh, the traffic allowed on the internet must go through the VPN server. This approach also prevents the uh, sharing of file transfer protocol or web internet intranet resources with the non-VPN internet users. So the firewall will be preventing the unauthorized users. So here in this uh, approach you can see the firewall is kept in between the VPN server and the internet. Okay. So the firewall is VPN server is behind the firewall. So for the internet interface on the firewall the thing is that uh, the firewall uh, will not uh, give a secured data transmission since it is behind the vpn server is behind the
firewall so whatever the things coming from the client vpn client the firewall will process or it will forward all the packets to the vpn server okay so usually uh, the first approach will be use vpn server in front of the firewall is uh, best one Next uh, requirement is encapsulation. So for data encapsulation, VPN will be relying on the uh, either of the technologies like uh, GRE, I, I, IP security, that is inter Internet Protocol Security, L2F, PPTP, and L2TP. So these are some of the protocols so, that is used while setting up a virtual private network. So in which among these protocol, uh, the most popular is uh, uh, Internet Protocol Security and PPTP. That is, we see this uh, protocols. So the same thing. Uh, previously we have seen uh, VP tunneling. No. So what the thing is that the packet will be coming from the uh, client side will be passed on to the uh, internet via the internet there will be a VPN tunnel will be created this tunneling across this tunnel the packet will be in the form of a capsulated form so the outer uh, packet will be capsulating the inner packet so at the destination or receiving end uh, the, uh, the de encapsulation will be done so that the original packet will be received at the receiver So secure VPN, in order to set up a virtual private network in a secure manner, the requirements are, so all the traffic on the secure VPN must be encrypted and authenticated. It do it does it's the process encryption and authentication also. The security properties of VPN must be agreed by all the par parties in the, who are all connected in the uh, virtual private network. So no one outside uh, the VPN can affect the security property of the VPN. Okay. So there are three types of uh, virtual private networks over there. One is remote access VPN, intranet VPN, and the other one is extranet VPN. So what is meant by remote access VPN is that it allows the one individual user to establish a secure connection with a remote computer network. Okay. So there are two components required in uh, setting up a remote access VPN. The first one is NAS, that is Network Access Server. So the other thing is uh, VPN client, remote access VPN, the client software. Okay. So here you can see remote how the remote access VPN is set up. So the client is going to communicate with the main office. So this client will be uh, sending any data via the uh, VPN channel with the NAS. So NAS is nothing but network access server. Okay. The next comes the intranet VPN. So what is meant by intranet VPN? You can go for uh, connecting the headquarters, remote offices, branch offices, over a shared infrastructure with the help of the dedicated connections. So remote access VPN is uh, set up between the employee or any user with that of a, any organization or at any campus. That is remote access VPN. Intranet VPN means you can go for connecting the uh, companies which are located remotely. So for example, the branch offices may be located in different places. So that remote places can be connected with the, uh, by setting up an intranet VPN. Okay. The benefit of using this intranet VPN or it reduces the WAN bandwidth cost and it also uh, useful for connecting the new sites. Easily. So here you can see uh, how the intranet VPN is set up. So three, uh, two remote offices and one main office is connected via the intranet VPN. The next comes the extranet VPN. 
So external VPN means uh, it links the customers, suppliers, partners, and who are all the communities who are interested to uh, to connect to your uh, corporate intranet via the uh, shared infrastructure using the dedicated connections. This is possible. So any one uh, customers can be connected via the internet. Okay. So in this example, the VPN is often in. Uh, uh, mail conversation or fax okay so extranet vpn uh, also facilitates e-commerce also so here you can see extranet vpn is set up so this uh, employee who may be a boss, uh, business partner or supplier or customer can be connected with the main office with the help of the extranet vpn So VPN tunneling protocols. So to set up a VPN, you are in need of three types of protocols. One is point to point tunneling protocol. The other one is L2TP is layer two tunneling protocol. And the third one is internet protocol security. So what is point to point tunneling protocol is that it is most widely used protocol method, a VPN uh, supported VPN method among the Windows users and it was created by Microsoft in association with the technology companies. So compared to other methods, uh, this protocol PT, PPTP is very fast, faster uh, protocol. It is also available for Linux users, Mac users also. So in this uh, voluntary tunneling method is used. So next comes the layer two tunneling protocol. So this is another uh, tunneling protocol that supports the VPN. The difference between PPTP, that is point to point tunneling protocol and layer two tunneling protocol is that the second one that is layer two tunneling protocol provides not only the data confidentiality, but it provides the data integrity. So coming on to the layer two tunneling protocol, it provides confidentiality. That is the data will be uh, transferred in a secure manner, but it also, it provides the data also. Layer 2 tunneling protocol was developed by Microsoft and Cisco. It's a combination of between the PPTP and Layer 2 protocol forwarding. Okay. It's a one uh, internet protocol security. So this is actually a collection of multiple protocols. It can be used as a complete VPN protocol solution and also it uh, uses the encryption scheme within the uh, layer 2 tunneling protocol or point to point tunneling protocol. So this uh, protocol exists at the network layer, layer 3 in the OSC model. So here you can see the difference between uh, all these uh, three types of uh, protocols point to point uh, tunneling protocol layer to tunneling protocol and uh, open vpn okay. so all these are uh, discussed with the uh, supported os compatibility security configuration used to ports you can have the summary this point to point tunneling protocol is very fast and uh, very easy to set up it's a good choice if your device does not support the open uh, VPN or SSTP VPN. So mostly this uh, PP point to point tunneling protocol is used. Layer to tunneling protocol and uh, internet protocol security is a good choice if your dis device does not support the open VPN. Okay. Uh, it uh, also cares about high security is provided with this uh, protocol and open vpn is the recommended protocol for windows linux and mac os so performance is also very high security and related all is provided with the open vpn so the, uh, then uh, we can discuss uh, what are the advantages of using the for setting up a uh, virtual private network is cost effective and it can have uh, mobility security is uh, achieved in a high manner and uh, easy to 
you can go for uh, adding so many number of users or you can go for removing the uh, users also greater scalability also so the disadvantages are understanding the security issues is mainly focusing on security okay there will be unpredictable internet traffic also so it is also difficult to accommodate some products from the different vendors uh, focus uh, related with the security purpose we can uh, uh, difficult to accommodate the so many products okay so vpn uh, should protect the data mainly for uh, the protection of data we are going for setting up a vpn so while traveling on the public network if some intruders can uh, capture or hack the data so to avoid this we are going for setting up a vpn so it provides secure data transmission reliability means uh, employees in the remote offices can be uh, able to connect to the vpn with no trouble at any time so vpn should provide the same quality of connection for each user even if they are uh, uh, when it is handling a maximum number of connections also so cost savings so it eliminates the need for a long distance lease line so lease line the lot will be used here okay so lease line uh, will be used in the traditional system so vpn connection will be using a vpn tunneling is uh, carried out okay so reducing long distance telephone charges also for remote access and transferring the support burden to the service provider is also less operational cost is also scalability means uh, it provides efficiency with the broadband technology and it also uh, provides flexibility okay. and these are the uh, disadvantages uh, we are focusing the security issues is and uh, careful installation and configuration to ensure the uh, sufficient pro protection to the public network like the internet okay so performance and reliability is uh, internet based uh, vpn is not under the any organization direct control okay so here are some of the industries uh, that uses the virtual private networks or uh, healthcare manufacturing companies or retail companies banking financial general business all uh, industries will be using uh, will be choosing this uh, virtual private uh, networks for the secure transmission of data okay. these are some of the references used for the presentation so thank you for patient listening